In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cute baby seal using the iPad and Procreate. Just like all my videos do, it's in real time. So that means no time lapse or edits. You can follow along every step of the way from the sketch process to the inks to the color flats and then adding shadows and highlights. It's all there, it's all step by step. So if you wanna follow along and draw with me, keep watching. All right guys, so let's go ahead and draw a cute baby seal. Starting out, I'm using a 3000 by 3000, 300 DPI canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out sketching, so I'm gonna use my cartoon sketch pencil, which is part of my cartooning pack for Procreate, available on Gumroad. And for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download this exact same color palette that I'm using in today's video, you can find it for free on my website, bjdell.com. If you go to the YouTube reference materials page, which I'll also link this down in the description below, you can download that, like I said, for free. There's also a video at the top of the page that kind of walks you through how to install a palette in Procreate if you're new. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna use black to start sketching. And you'll see I'm just on that layer one here. And once again, like all my designs, I start out with some really basic shapes. So we're just gonna start out with an oval here. It's gonna be the head. I'm gonna have this kind of curved down and around into like a cheek area and the chin. So we'll draw another oval down there. This is gonna be kind of a three quarters perspective. So you can kind of pull a center line down here if that kind of helps you visualize it a little bit better. And then we'll do another oval here for the body starts to come down and around we'll have the tail back here so we can draw another oval here kind of connect here you'll see that as we start to connect these ovals together you can start to kind of see how this is going to form the body here and then we'll have one of the parts of the tail here and the other flipper part of the tail back here we need these front flippers and the three quarters perspective that we're going with here, this one's gonna kind of be hidden behind this belly as it comes down and around. So just drawing an oval here, kind of connecting that line back up. You can see how that starts to form that flipper. And then we'll have another one down here, an oval kind of coming back up into the body here. So that's the, the general kind of layout of the body. We've got that kind of blocked in now. Now we can start kind of forming this head. So as we bring this oval down, we're gonna kind of pull it in where they meet and then back out. So we get that nice little cheek area there. And do a little chin down here. And then back up into the head. Now I'm basically just going a little bit darker here so we can start to see everything. I'm gonna have an eye here on the right side and because the perspective here the left side then is going to be a little bit bigger than the right here on the center line we'll draw just a triangle nose there kind of bring that snout up and around over top of that eye there get the pupils in here some little circle ovals there iris around there some eyebrows here and then the mouth, just kind of have an open mouth here. Looks really big right now because we've got that center line coming down, but we can clean this up later. And then we can start to kind of fine tune this. Bring this back part down and around into the flipper there. Have that flipper coming down and then connecting back down in the body. A couple lines there on those. I think that's pretty good for the overall shape. Now, this is pretty sketchy. It's not super professional looking right now, and that's really what the inking process is gonna do. So if you're looking at this right now saying, eh, I think it's a little rough around the edges, it's supposed to be. So we'll go up here and I'm gonna grab the arrow, kind of move this guy towards the center and up a little bit. I'm gonna have him sitting on kind of like an iceberg here floating. So we'll go ahead and draw another oval down here to give him something to sit on. Now this looks a little plain right now, 
So if we go ahead and kind of pull some curves around, so we start to bring this back, we can kind of make this look a little bit more three-dimensional and a little bit more interesting for the viewer. Now pulling down some straight lines here on the edge, we can go ahead and connect this around. Once again, really sketchy. I'm not worried about making this perfect right now. And then some lines here and back in. So you see now this has kind of a three-dimensional look to it and looks, like I said, a lot better than just a basic circle or oval going around there. All right, so that's our sketch. We're ready now to start going in and doing the inking on this. So to do this, I'm gonna come back up to my layers menu and I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. This is gonna be our inks layer. First though, I wanna turn down how dark this is. So if we go and tap the end here to bring up blend mode, we've got this opacity slider here. We can drop this down, make it light. We wanna see it, we just don't want it to be too dark. And now we're on layer two, which is gonna be our inks. Coming back up to the brush library now, I'm gonna switch over to my standard inker streamline right here. And I wanna test this out and see the thickness. I'm gonna drop this down just a little bit, down to about five, six, maybe 6%, it's good. Bring this up to about there, it looks good, all right. Now, this is where I decide where is the light source coming from? I know we're not doing shadows and highlights right now, but I've talked about this in previous videos. I like to use different line weights in my design, and the line weight's a thicker one. The kind of thing that it does is it shows the viewer where the shadows are, and the lighter lines then are closer to the light source, and those are thinner lines. That's where your highlights are gonna be. So on this design in particular, let's have the light source coming in from this side here, which means we're gonna have highlights here, and we're gonna have shadows back in this area, which means thicker lines back here and thinner lines here towards the light source. So now that we've got that decided, we're gonna go ahead and start inking. I'm gonna pull in here just a little bit closer so you can see. Now this brush that I'm using, the standard anchor streamline, there's a lot of pressure sensitivity with this, and you can get some nice tapers on the ends of the lines, but it does take some practice. As you'll see here, let me zoom in really close so you can see. Starting out with really light pressure, I'll get a nice taper start. And then as I come back through the line, I let up pressure and kind of lift up my arm and my wrist and my hand, and it gives that nice tapered line there. Now, if you do get these brushes from that gum road link that I was talking about, they're the exact settings and the exact brushes that I'm using here. It just takes some time and some practice to get this to look like that. So if you're having trouble, if you're getting you know big blots at the beginning of the line, it just means you're pressing too hard. So just do some practice there to get those nice tapered lines. I'm gonna pull back here so we can see a little bit better. I'm gonna bring this around. So darker line back here where the shadow is and then coming up into a thinner line there. And this is all just letting up pressure as I bring the line around. So applying more pressure back here gives me that darker, thicker line. Go ahead and do the nose now. Get that filled in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eraser for this. Once again, just that standard anchor streamline. I'll erase part of the nose here so it's got a nice little reflection off the top there. Once again, pressing harder, letting up at the end of that stroke. Back to my brush now. Go ahead and bring the bridge of the nose down and around. And then we'll get the eyes here. So for the eyes, if I've got ovals or circles like these, I like to have kind of a thinner line here at the bottom and have a thicker line up at the top. Kind of represents where the, the lid and the eyelashes are having that thicker line here. So starting out with less pressure and then as we go around, increasing the pressure towards the top and then pulling up that pressure again towards the bottom gives us that effect. We can do the same thing over here. Just holding down to lock it in. You'll see there the same effect there. Thicker line there, kind of thins out here towards the bottom. Get some ovals in here for the pupils and holding down my finger and the pencil at the same time is gonna lock in a perfect circle there. Same thing on this side. With our perspective, the eye here on the right you'll see is smaller. Pupils a little bit smaller too. 
Going in with the eraser then, we can go ahead and add some reflections in there. Remember the light source is coming in from this way, so just holding down there and just doing some erasing gives us those. We'll go back then to the brush, get the eyebrows in here. Once again, just thick pressure at the beginning and letting up there towards the end to give us this nice tapered line. Pull the mouth down here now. You can kind of see now how that was intended to look with out the back there. Seeing through that middle line coming down. Pull that up there. And then we need to kind of connect the head here. So I'm not gonna connect all the way here. I want that taper there. And this line here, I want kind of tapered in to where it goes in that direction, but it doesn't actually connect. All right, let's go ahead and do the body here. Once again, kind of thicker lines here coming down and around. Stop there. Pull this out here and back up. Maybe another tapered line here, so it's got kind of a fold there in the skin. A couple of those tapered lines down here. Bring this flipper around. Tapered line there, oops, and then back here. You'll see on some of these lines, I'm not following exact with the sketch. The sketch honestly should be just kind of a guide of where everything goes. You don't need to 100% trace the sketch. And I think tracing the sketch and trying to go too close to it sometimes will lead you to have a little bit more mechanical looking art. Uh, keeping it like this is really kind of keeping it organic and making it a little bit more free-flowing So that's why I don't worry too much about making sure everything perfectly lines up with the sketch Bring these lines around once again using a little bit lighter lines here So we're coming in towards that light source Same thing here a little bit lighter line as that comes down and around And then another tapered line here just having that fold of skin there where that meets the the back of those flippers there. Pull back out so we can see what we're left with so far. It's looking good. Maybe throw in some little hair coming there off the top. Just some tapered lines. Oops. Move back to the eraser there. Some tapered lines there coming off the top of the head. And then down here to, to the iceberg. That around. Again, straight line here, straight line here, and then we just have to connect those. Using the eraser, we can kind of fix if we overlapped any right there. Back here, straight line down. And follow that same curve back into it, back up. All right, so let's go ahead, back up to our layers menu, turn in off the sketch layer, and that's what we're left with. There's our lines, I think it looks pretty good. From here then, we're ready to move on and start to add in the color flats. One thing I did forget here, I can see, is I didn't get the irises in here. So we'll get those, just a really thin line here around, holding it down to make it kind of nice and finished. All right, so there we go. Now we're ready for color flats. So to do color flats, start out, we're gonna first come up here to our layers menu, open this up. We're gonna make another new layer and we're gonna drag this down behind layer two. So we've got our lines layer here. This is our color flats layer. And of course our sketch layer, which is turned off right now. Before I go in and add any colors though, I wanna go ahead and make sure that we set layer two, our lines layer to reference. This is gonna allow us to drag and drop colors onto layer three, using layer two as kind of a guide of where those lines should go. So let's go ahead now and come up here. Let's actually, let's do our background color here. Let's change this. So if we tap on our background color, we've got lots of white in this design. So I just wanna change the background with it being white, we can't really tell when we drag and drop white into it. So just picking a random color. Doesn't matter what you choose. I've got this purple, pick something, doesn't matter. 
We're going to use white though a lot, so we need to see it. All right, so we got that done. Layer three is going to be our color flats. That's where we want to drag and drop our colors. So back up to our color palette here. First line here, second color in. Got the base color for the seal. Just drag and drop that in. We'll see that'll fill that in. Next up, we've got white. So we want to go down here and here. And you'll see this pops up, continue filling with recolor. So if we don't want to drag and drop over every single time, we can just hit this and it brings up right here. You can see this little itty bitty cursor. We can just drag that to our next spot and just tap inside. Make sure that we're actually tapping on the open parts here. And we can just fill that in really fast. It goes really quick doing that way. And then next up, we got this blue for the eyes. And you'll see I still had that cursor on that last section. So that's why it turned that nose blue. If I just hold down here to select white, I can drag that back in. So there we go. And then I don't really have a color for the mouth. Let's go ahead and add one in. I'm gonna drag and drop this into my color palette here. We'll just do it on the bottom one here. We'll throw that in for the mouth. One thing I just realized looking at this too, we don't have any whiskers on here. So before we go in too much further, we've got the color flats done. Switch back to black. And going back up to our lines layer that set as reference. Just go ahead and drag in some whiskers here. So that he's got that seal look to him. I think that was one thing that was kind of missing there. And then I might even come in here and just drag in some lines that are tapered there. Just kind of give him those creases underneath his eyes. Make those pop a little bit more. I think that looks good. All right, there we go. So color flats are done. Got a few little extra details added in there as well. Also kind of want to give him some spots here on his back. So if we go in here, back down to our color flats layer, and let's use this color right here. Second row, first color. And then I'm just gonna come in here and just kind of add in some half ovals on his back and his tail here, just on that one side. Just adds in a little bit more details and makes it a little bit more interesting. Just like that. Okay, looks good. So we got the color flats done. Next up, we're ready to start adding our shadows and our highlights. Now, this section of adding shadows is kind of easier because we already decided where the light source is coming from during the inking stage. We got that light source coming in from that top left. So back here on the right hand side is shadows, highlights over here on the left. We're sticking with that same color that we just added those dots in, but we need to make a new layer. So back up to our layers menu, plus for a new layer, and we wanna set this one as clipping mask. So if we tap on this to bring up the extended menu here and select clipping mask, what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to draw on this layer, it's a totally separate layer, while using this as kind of a guide as to where the colors go. So the things that we draw on this layer are only gonna show up on the parts that are colored on this layer. We can't go outside over here because it's not colored in on this layer. So we'll start off with the shadows. Like I said, we're gonna go in this back section here and just kind of add in shadows along the back. You'll see I'm out here, but nothing's showing up because we've got that set as clipping mask. So just a really good tool to use. Saves you a lot of time from going in there and having to erase areas that you drew over that you really didn't mean to draw over. That's why we use it just a time saver. And one of the benefits of digital art is having little tools at your disposal like that. So, so we've got this filled in. Let's go ahead and fill in kind of around this eye here, up underneath that eyebrow. You'll see I'm just kind of following the lines and the curves that I've already created with that ink slayer. 
So the way this eye curves, that's the way that shadow falls. Connecting here is following that same kind of curve of that line there. We'll get down here, underneath the belly, underneath that neck, underneath where the chin comes in there. Get this all filled in. This foot filled in over here and you'll see right now it is going on that white part because that's colored in on that if you wanted to kind of save time too here on that previous step that we did when we dragged and dropped those color flats in if you want to make multiple color flats you can do that as well uh, you could do the white on a completely separate layer so that that way once you go in here and do the shadows on the seal, you don't have to worry about keeping them inside this part and not hitting that white. That's another time saver if you want to do it. Of course, in this video, doing multiple layers and explaining every step actually takes more time. But once you get the hang of it on your own, you can use little tricks like that to kind of speed up your workflow. So we get this underside here. Even though this is coming in towards that light source, it's still towards the bottom of the design, which is still going to have some weight to it. It's going to have that bottom shadow there. All right, I think that looks good. So now what we need to do this is going to be a little bit too dark as is. So we're going to drop the opacity of this layer and make it not as dark. So if we go up here to the layers menu again, hit that N for blend mode, just like we did with the sketch. And we drop this down to, let's say about 40%, looks pretty good. He said, we don't want it too dark, we don't want it too light, and I think that gives off a pretty good shadow there. I'm going to come back in here and do another shadow just underneath this line. Bring that around. And then we'll also do one kind of inside that iris there. So that just looks a little bit different there. All right, now I want to do a shadow here inside the eye as well, but I want this on a separate layer because the, the opacity for what is needed on this shadow might not be the same as what's needed on the inside part because it's on white. So we're going to go ahead and make a new layer, just like we did last time. We can add clipping mask if we want to, but it's up to you here. We're inside the eyes. The only thing with this is I think we're going to use the same shadow on the ice, which is white as well. So I think we will hit a clipping mask on this just because it'll keep us in the lines down there. All right. So back up to our color palette, we're going to choose this light blue color here and we'll just kind of pull this around once again, just kind of keeping with the flow of that original line. You'll see I'm pulling it out towards the ends here so it kind of tapers off. Just like that. We can even add in some ovals here for some extra shadows in there. Makes it look a little bit more 3D there. All right, now we can go ahead and drag and drop our blue into the ice there. You can see, once again, that's just making it look even more three-dimensional. And then just coming in under here, kind of adding the shadow here around where he's sitting. Once again, just kind of give him some weight and to add a little bit more dimension to it. All right, looks good. So that's pretty much it for the shadows. So next up, let's go ahead and move on to the highlights. So back up to our layers menu, one more layer, once again, setting it as clipping mask. So we've got three clipping mask layers now, and you'll see they can stack on top of each other. They all point down to the base one. So even though you've got this one pointing down, it doesn't point down to this. It's actually kind of stair stepping down to that original. Back up to our color palette and choosing white here. I'm going to go ahead and here and just kind of pull in a shadow along or a highlight along the top part of the head. Once again, not going with this bright white. So we need to come up here to the layers menu and you guessed it. 
tap on N for blend mode and bring this down. I think once again, about 40% looks pretty good. Then draw some other oval, not that oval highlights here. Just kind of gives it more of a shine there. Get those there. Pull some in here along the back. Along the tail here. And here. Once again, you'll see I'm just kind of connecting this so it's got kind of that taper there as it goes back into the line. It doesn't go to the end. It kind of tapers out from there. Add in some more highlights there. Let's get the top of this flipper done. And that side there coming around. And this one is super shadowed in here, like the entire thing has a shadow. So usually here what I like to do, if we come back up here to our layers menu and go to the shadow layer, I'll come back in with the eraser and just remove just a tad bit of this. Am I on the right one? Nope, there, this one. Just remove a tad bit of this so you can still see that, okay, yeah, there is, you know, two different values there. It's not that solid color. It just makes it pop a little bit more. So there we go. Let's go ahead and turn our background now back to white. And then finally, I think I just want to add like a circle or something behind him here. Let's just use that same blue that we used for the iceberg and the, the eyes there. Let's select that from the color palette. And then coming down underneath our color flats layer. Let's make a new layer here. And then we're just going to draw in a circle. I usually like to do this with my finger just because if you're using that inker brush, you might get a blob at the beginning or the end. You'll see when I drag that in to fill it in, fill it in everything. That's because we still have reference turned on up here. So if we tap on layer two, turn off reference. Come back down here and drag and drop this in. It'll fill that in. Now with the arrow here, we can kind of reposition this. So if we don't like where it's at, if we want it bigger, we can make it bigger. We can make it smaller. It's totally up to you how you want to get it situated in there. I think that looks pretty good. One last thing, I'm seeing this looks a little plain down here. So if I go back to my color palette and choose black, and then on my lines layer, I could just pull in some tapered lines here just to make this ice look like it's cracking here, like where it broke off. We wanna make sure that these lines stay pretty thin. We don't wanna get them confused with the lines that we had there on the outlines. And you can just kind of split them up here too. You don't have to go 100% all the way from left to right. You can make some Go up further, some go down further. Totally up to you how you want to do it. Just really kind of random here to finish out the project. And sometimes like this, you come down to the end of something and think, hey, maybe I'm done. And kind of pull out and look at it and say, okay, well, I think I could probably add one last thing to it. Of course, that could turn into two last things and three and four and five. And the next thing you know, you've got 10 hours on a project that you thought was going to take you, you know, 30 minutes, but that's art, right? All right. So there we go. And we could also add in just some little dots here around just so that doesn't look so plain. Once again, just kind of random, no real rhyme or reason. You'll see I'm just pressing down harder for bigger, dots and then lighter for smaller ones. All right, last thing I'm gonna do then, making a new layer, I'm gonna come in here and sign this. And this is gonna be weird because this is the first video of 2022. So I gotta remember to make sure that I sign it with the right date. Once again, just coming back in and fixing one last thing. You can always 
turn into 20 last things. <laughs> All right, so there we go. A cute baby seal for the first video of 2022. Happy New Year, everyone. Appreciate you watching the video. If you did enjoy it, if you got some valuable tips out of this, definitely feel free to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Got a bunch of new ideas for 2022, a bunch of new tutorials and different ways I'm gonna approach stuff. So can't wait for you guys to see those and join me for that ride. If you do take part in any of these videos, tutorials and follow along, if you post your design online, which I do encourage if you're on Instagram or Twitter, if you share it on there, tag me at BJ Dell. I love to see what you guys do with these. And it just really brings a smile to my face flipping through the feed and being able to see you guys participating alongside of these videos. It means the world to me. Uh, as for me, I can also be found online at BJDell.com. So until next time, keep creating.